Good morning. <laughs> Welcome to uh, the the first adventure into the kingdom of funguses. Um, this, so we're we're marching through the different kingdoms of life, and then once we get Animalia, we're going to be slowing down and spending time on each phyla. But um, right now, we're going a kingdom at a time, and we are following um, the the order of increasing complexity. So we started with bacteria, then we spent some time in protista, and now we are here in the fungi, kingdom fungi. So these are all the things that mold and fester. It's a great, great time. Some general characteristics of the kingdom fungi. They are eukaryotic, so just like protists, they have a nucleus. Every cell of every fungus has a nucleus. Um, they are multicellular, so there's a difference here between protists and funguses. Um, protists, when they got together with, lot, with lots of cells in one thing, we called it a colony, because those individual cells did not differentiate. They didn't do anything different from their neighbor. They were all exactly the same kind of cell, just living next to something else. In a fungus, we see true... Um, differentiation. We see some cells that take on a different job. Now, it's only slight differentiation. Still, most fungus cells are the same as every other fungus cell. But when we get to a fruiting body, there are some cells that produce spores and other cells don't. And so that means that there's division of labor and that means that it's a multicellular organism. So it's a pretty basic multicellular organism, but it is still a multicellular organism. Okay. There are some cellular specialization, but no tissues. So um, tissues or organs are where a group of cells all next to each other have said, we together are going to do this job. And so we together make up a tissue of some kind. Like you have the organ of skin, and uh, underneath the skin is muscle, and you can even look within the skin and find different layers of tissue within the skin. There's different groups of cells doing the same job. We don't see that in a fungus. We see some cells that have a job and some cells that don't, but there's no organs in a fungus. You will dissect a fungus tomorrow. Um, and when you do, it's going to be kind of boring because most of the cells all do the same thing. Okay? So... There are, there are some cellular specializations, not a lot. They are heterotrophic, which means what again? What does the word heterotrophic mean? They eat other things, right? They eat other things. They eat other stuff. They are not photosynthetic. You don't see a fungus growing in sunlight and getting its feed that way. Matter of fact, most funguses grow in the shade. They would prefer cool and damp as opposed to warm and sunny. Um, and so they are heterotrophic. They eat other things, but they have external digestion. This is really interesting. A fungus does not take food particles into its body and then eat them. A fungus digests it outside of its body and then absorbs the nutrients. So a fungus actually excretes digestive juices on what it's growing on. And then that thing is digested outside of the fungus. And then it absorbs the nutrients. Imagine if we ate like that, right? So Caleb is Caleb's at uh, at lunch and he opens up the little clamshell box from the school lunch and he just sticks his hand in it. And then he's talking, you know, and he's carrying on a conversation with whatever else is going on. Digestive juices leak out of his fingers. And as he's talking, the spaghetti falls apart and it becomes this like ooze in the box. And then it just gets absorbed through his fingers and into his body. And he's just, you know, chatting away the whole time. And then we watch the spaghetti go and then get sucked up, right? That's, that's the way funguses eat, which is why you don't want to eat things that the fungus is on because the fungus is already digested. The fungus has, has excreted digestive juices and the thing is falling apart, right? So that's why moldy stuff is not yummy because it's already been being digested um, and its nutritional value is going down. Reproduction is sexual or a asexual. 
So it has, it, they can do gametes, and they can also do spores. Spores are little cloned cells of the fungus that it coughs out into the atmosphere, and wherever those spores land, they produce another fungus, or funguses can um, sexually reproduce as well. Okay, so um, pretty complicated creatures. Obviously, uh, you, you have run into lots of funguses in your life. These are not new things to you, but perhaps there's some things you didn't know about. The bodies of a fungi, a fungi, are composed of slender fibers called hyphae, and that is the cellular unit. Um, hyphae actually have lots and lots and lots of nuclei per hyphae, so most of the time a cell has one nucleus. But a hyphae is like a whole bunch of cells that have fused, and they share cytoplasm and, and organelles and things of that nature. So it's a, it's a fiber called a hyphae, and that's the cellular unit of the fungus. Um, if we get a whole bunch of hyphae together, we call that mass of hyphae a mycelia, or mycelia is the name of the tissue or the material made up of hyphae. And mycelia looks like um, kind of like a, a copper wire might, where there's a whole bunch of strands of copper all running next to each other. If you've ever clipped a copper wire and stripped off the plastic and looked at the wire underneath, it's not usually a solid mass of copper. It's usually a whole bunch of fibers that, that run next to each other and contact each other through the plastic. Uh, and that's kind of what mycelia looks like, okay? Oh, spelling error, I'm sorry. Rhizoids are hyphae embedded in material, the, sorry, sorry about that, the material on which the fungus is growing. So if the mycelia goes into the thing that it's growing on, so you've got a squirrel, the squirrel dies, the squirrel falls from the tree, lands on the ground, fungal spores land on the squirrel. Now we have mushrooms on a squirrel, okay? The, the, uh, the roots of the mushroom, and I use that word incorrectly, they are not roots, but the parts of the fungus that go into the body of the dead squirrel are called rhizoids, okay? So they, they go through the tissue. It could be a dead squirrel, it could be a dead log, it could be your skin if you have athlete's foot, it could be, um, it could be the bark of a living tree if it's shelf mold, um, but Whatever it is, the anchoring part of the fungus is, a, is called a rhizoid. Okay, so it's like a root, but it's not a root. It's a rhizoid. And then Haustoria are hyphae which invade an organism's cells and absorb nutrients. So if it just goes in there to anchor it, um, but it doesn't invade the cells of the thing that it's growing on, then it's a rhizoid. If it goes in there and actually invades the cell, then it's called haustoria. Now, not all funguses have haustoria. Sometimes the rhizoid is all it has, and the rhizoid will digest the cells around it without having to actually pop into the cell. But sometimes they do invade the cell itself, and then those parts that invade are called haustoria. Okay? So, fibers. Masses of fibers. Masses of fibers stuck into something. Fibers that are actually penetrating cells. These are the words that we have. I think I am almost ready for some pictures. Yes. So, this is what a fungus looks like under a microscope. Okay? So, these individual little slender fibers, these are anything. Okay? So, and each of these fibers is one cell, so it's they're long things, um, and the cells, this one hyphae, this is technically one cell because all the cytoplasm flows around through this, this hyphae. Sometimes the hyphae have little septum, little walls that partially wall off each nucleus region. And, but the walls aren't complete. These are, this isn't a separate cell. The walls are, have holes in them. And so cytoplasm and nutrients and 
uh, chemical messengers, molecules, and all kinds of stuff flows through, this, through the walls. This is still one cell, it's just got some segments in it. Or sometimes the hyphae are, do not have septae. And so then the nuclei just float around, and uh, this is still all one cell, but it's got tons of nuclei in it. It's a polynucleated cell. Okay. Um, this is an example of mycelia, and where it's, it's lots of these fibers running next to each other, and these are in soil. And so the fungus is digesting organic matter in the soil. So because this is hyphae in something that it's digesting, these are rhizoids. And this is quote unquote roots of fungus, but they're not roots. They are just hyphae growing through the soil. Um, and so this would be called a rhizoid. This is more examples of mycelia. Here is a dead thing, and the dead thing rotted because that's what funguses are for. That's why God made them, is to remove dead things from the earth, right? And as the fungus is growing on this, it sends out mycelia to try to find more dead things. What else can I do while I'm here, right? And so this is mycelia going out across the surface of soil, looking for more dead stuff to decompose. These are, this is a, a micro, micrograph, a picture through a microscope of rhizoids and haustoria. So these little tiny pieces of, of fungal body, little tiny hyphae coming out of larger structures of mycelia, these would penetrate individual cells. Um, this particular picture was taken out of a fungus growing in a culture. So there were cells for it to puncture, but this fungus is a cell puncturing fungus. So you can see the little house story that would have popped into some kind of cell somewhere and drained that cell of its nutrients as it decomposed the organism. Okay. And this is a picture of a fungus, again, grown in culture, but you can see all parts of it here. So, um, these thick uh, patches, this is mycelia. These would be rhizoids growing through um, some kind of body of material. And then it does have haustoria at the end that would have popped through some cells. And then this is a fruiting body, which we have not talked about yet, but this is the reproductive structure of a fungus. So here you can see the whole body of a fungus grown in culture, so you can see it all at one time. You don't have to like, pull it out of some dead thing. Okay, how do they reproduce? Funguses have baby funguses, um, and there's two ways to do it, okay? Sporophores is what we call an aerial hyphae that produces spores asexually. So a sporophore is a cloning organism or cloning part of the fungus. The, the sporophore grows out of the ground and releases spores. Spores are baby fungi, but they're cloned baby fungi. It's not sexual reproduction. This doesn't take a mommy fungus and a daddy fungus, right? This takes just a fungus that decides to have babies. And so it grows this aerial thing and it releases spores into the air. There's two varieties of sporophore. There's ones that are enclosed in a sac, and then the sac breaks and releases the spores. Or there are ones that don't have a sac, and the spores are created just out in the air and then are released. The mushrooms that you are familiar with and eat are conidophores, the, the naked spores, okay? Um, and so the structure comes out of the ground. The mushroom is a fruiting body. It's a sporophore. It comes out of the ground and it grows spores, but it grows them just underneath through the vented side of a mushroom. And there's no sac. They're not protected while they're growing. They're just growing. And then it releases those spores into the air. That's the purpose of the mushroom. 
is to grow spores and release them in the air. It's a conidophore. The sporangiophores that grow them in a sac are not as common for you to run into. Nobody eats them. You'll never find them on your plate. Um, and you may run across them in the jungle if you're just hiking around out there, uh, but you probably wouldn't notice it or notice that it's much different from a mushroom just looking at it. Uh, but they are an enclosed ball that will then break and release spores when they're ready. So it's kind of more like a fruit that grows the seed inside, and then the fruit will, will release the seeds when it's ready. Okay. The opposite. Um, is a stolon, and a stolon is a it doesn't just come out of one body of hyphae, but actually is a union of lots of kinds of hyphae that will grow together and then rise out of the soil to release spores. So a stolon is like a group effort. My hyphae and somebody else's hyphae are going to all come together and cooperate on growing a stolon. So again, it comes out of the ground and releases spores, but it's from multiple individuals together working on one thing, okay? So let's look at some pictures. Here's a hyphae, and out of the hyphae grows a sac. So this is a conidophore. Sorry, no kidding. This is, a, this is not a conidophore. This is a sporangiophore, okay? This is a sac, and the sac will, will produce spores and then rupture. Um, here is a sac that is in the process of releasing its spores. So this is a sporangiophore as well, um, and it's releasing its spores when this, when this micrograph is taken. Uh, this is an example of a conidiophore, and a mushroom is as well. Um, where the, the spores are grown just out there. There's no protective sac around them. And so the spores are being produced, and when the spores are ready, they'll be released into the wind. Okay? Um, when hyphae of different mating types, which is kind of the fungal version of gender, touch, they fuse combined DNA and produce a fruiting body which grows up and releases the spores. So funguses don't have gender really. They have, they have mating types. So they're usually labeled as positive and negative just to keep them apart. Um, but there's nothing different about their anatomy which is why they're not labeled male and female. You can't look at a fungus growing through the soil and say, oh, that's a boy, right? There's nothing different about its anatomy. Um, but it knows that it is of a particular kind of mating group, mating type. And when it runs into another kind of fungus, but it's the same species, not another kind of fungus, a different mating type. So when positive touches negative or when A touches B, and they run into each other in the soil, they're like, hey, we can make a baby, right? And then it will produce a fungal body, a fruiting body, which grows up and releases spores. And the fruiting body is kind of like the baby, but then it releases other babies. So it's kind of confusing. The, the, the fruiting body itself is neither um, the the one mating type, like mating type positive and mating type negative, it's neither positive nor negative. It's what is grown when positive touches negative. Then it's like, oh, hey, let's combine DNA and let's go through meiosis and let's create, um, let's create this organism that is partially you and partially me. And then out comes the mushroom. And then the spores are released, and the spores are are all um, the genetically different babies that were produced by type one and type two, type A, type B, positive and negative, however you want to call it. The two the two mating types that touched, they exchanged DNA, and out come all the spores. Okay, that's called a fruiting body. 
Um, I said, I think I made a mistake earlier when I said that a mushroom was a canidiophore. Canidiophores are smaller, mushrooms are much bigger. So uh, fruiting bodies are, are a sexually produced thing, and that's, that's what a mushroom is. But it does have naked spores. So here's some mushrooms. You're used to seeing these things out in the woods, walking around, or if you sometimes get them growing in your lawn after a good week. Um, mushrooms come in all different shapes and sizes, and they really are quite beautiful. Um, this is a, this is a mushroom that's kind of grown upside down and the, uh, the rainwater will come in and splash out spores and most mushrooms, the spores grow underneath and the wind carries them out. But here the splashing rainwater carries them out, which is very cool because then where the spore lands is already wet and it can grow there well. Okay. Now, the phyla of funguses, the different kinds of funguses out there. There's only a couple, not nearly as many phyla as there were with protists. Um, phyla of fungi are organized based on colonial structure and the method of sexual reproduction. What does their fruiting body look like? Okay, that's how we organize them. Remember, we organized protists according to if it's a protozoan, how they move. If it's an algae, um, how it how it's uh, how it looks, the color of its uh, pigments. For funguses, we organize them according to the structure of their fruiting body. When they make a baby, what does it look like? Okay, zygomycota, and you'll see mycota in all of these. This is the word for fungus. My mycota means fungus. Zygo like a zygote, right? Um, Zygomycota are small fungi that produce short sporangia without a large fruiting body. So these guys don't make mushrooms. These guys make only the sporangia, the little tiny short spore re releasing organisms. Okay? There's no mushrooms here. The most common examples of these are funguses that grow on your food. These are things that you might find in your fridge if you left it too long, okay? These, uh, bread mold is a good example of that. Penicillin is a good example of that. Anybody ever, I'm sure almost everybody here has had penicillin when you get sick, right? You know that you're taking a fungus? Yeah. And is it, did you guys know the story of how we discovered that, that penicillin kills bacteria? It was, a, it was a, a biologist who was obviously a pretty messy guy. He, um, he ate an orange, and then he just left the orange on his lab bench, right? For a long enough time that it molded. So not a clean scientist. But he had, so then he had, he had molded orange, and he was a microbiologist, and he's looking at bacteria under microscopes and growing cultures of bacteria. And he's got this moldy orange, and he thought, I wonder what happens when you put moldy orange on a bacteria colony. <laughs> so he tossed his moldy orange rind into a bacteria colony, and lo and behold, it killed everything. And he's like, oh, look at that. And so we, he started um, doing some experimentation and discovered that it won't kill you. And so, voila, we have the, first, the world's first antibiotic, right? Um, so you ain't messy people. They, they helped out. Um, penicillin and bread mold are examples of zygomycota. These are no mushroom funguses. So this is strawberries that have sat too long. Okay? Um, and all of this white fuzzy stuff, these are all hyphae. And if you were to dissect the mushroom, uh, you would, uh, not, not, not the mushroom, the strawberry, you would find that there are rhizoids growing throughout the mushroom. Oh, I keep saying mushroom, the strawberry. Um, and digesting the strawberry. And you can see on the edges of the fungus that the strawberry is yellow and looking weird. And that's because the digestive juices of the, of the fungus are breaking down the, the strawberry and absorbing its nutrients, okay? So this is 
An example, this is bread bowl. Anybody ever had that experience? You take a loaf of bread out of the fridge, you're like, whoa. Yeah. 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 Yeah, you're like, oh, I can't eat that bread because that is already eating the bread. Yes. So, and again, no mushrooms anywhere. You don't see any mushrooms on this. Um, this only produces the sporangia four sorts of things. Okay. Here's penicillin. Oops, just kidding. Here's penicillin. This is the stuff that um, that we use now as an antibiotic, and it grows on oranges. Yeah. Okay. Two more, two more phyla. Um, Ascomycota are sac fungi. They produce spores and cup-like fruiting bodies called mascus. And the spores leave when the water droplets splash them out. I showed you a picture of that already. Um, so sac fungi. And these guys you will see here. We have them in the jungles uh, around here. If you go hiking around, you will see them, especially if you go on really wet trails, like if you do water waterfall trails or trails that go out to swimming holes. Um, if you go out to really wet places, you'll see these guys in the ground. And they look like an upside down mushroom. The mushroom, instead of being round on top with the spores underneath, they're round on bottom and the spores are on top. And the design there is that um, these spores will only survive if they land in a wet place. And so uh, the spores of these guys, the mushrooms, the spores that face down, the wind may carry them out and land them on a dry place and then the spore won't survive. And so if the mushroom is upside down and the water is what takes the spore out, then wherever the water with spores in it lands is going to be wet. And so it's a very cool design, um, and it allows the Aspomycotas to reproduce very, very faithfully, because usually wherever the spores land, they can get started. Okay? And then the Basidiomycota produce mushroom fruiting bodies of various sizes and shape, and the mushroom is called a Basidium. So Ascus is the name of an upside-down mushroom, and the phylum that makes them are Ascomycota. So you can see that those two names go together. A Basidium is the technical name for a mushroom, and the phylum that produces them are Basidiomycota. So again, they go together. If you can remember, an Ascus is a cup, and a Basidio is a mushroom, then you will always remember Ascidiomycota and Basidiomycota. Ascomycota, Basidio. Okay? So these are cup funguses and these are mushroom funguses. Pictures. Wait, just kidding. All right. Here is a sac fungus. Doesn't that look like a cow pile? <laughs> so this is this is an ascus, and the uh, this thing grows out of the ground, and you can see it's open on top, and inside are the spores. So rain's going to come in, and it's going to fill it up, and then start to splash and run out. And when the water starts coming out of this thing. It will all be full of spores. Yeah, looks a lot like a volcano. So that, or I, I, every time I see one, I'm like, oh, poop. no, it's a cup of fungus. Um, here's other ones. These look much more beautiful. And here they sit upright and they gather raindrops until they get really heavy. And then when they get too heavy, they fall over and they dump their spores on the ground. Isn't that cool? God is so intelligent. Let's have this little cup catch rain, and then when it gets too heavy, it's going to pull, pour over and pour spores and water on the ground. Great. Beautiful idea. Wet spores all over the place. Fungus gets to, gets to spread. Here's other ones, and these guys look kind of like bird's nests. Um, and these are packages of spores. These are not individual spores. Each of these has hundreds of spores in it, like little uh, brown paper bags full of spores. So this one, the water is going to come in and splash and knock these packages out, and they're going to land and 
break open and there'll be hundreds of little wet spores on the ground. So beautiful design, beautiful design. I don't know how people who don't believe in God can look at stuff like this and say, oh yeah, nature just discovered that spores need to be wet. And so it thought, oh, I'll turn a mushroom upside down. What? And, and I'll do, yeah, stop talking, you're stupid. This, <laughs> this is an amazing testimony to design. It's an amazing testimony to design. Um, here's some other cut funguses. Um, this one, uh, or sorry, no, these are not cut, these are basidiomycotas. These are mushrooms of various sort. Um, so these are all mushrooms. You don't necessarily eat all of these mushrooms. By the way, don't eat every mushroom you find, right? You know that? Yes. <laughs> Most mushrooms are poisonous. Only a very few can be edible. Okay? Um, there are some that will kill you very quickly. Um, so, yeah, unless you are very well trained, don't go gather your own mushrooms in the woods for yourself. Okay? Um, but these are all mushrooms. Has everybody seen tree bark shelf mold? I think that's so cool. You're walking through the woods and you see mushrooms coming out of the side of a tree. It's really neat. If you watch Tinkerbell movies, these are where they store things. Um, more pictures of mushrooms. These are slender little mushrooms. Some mushrooms uh, bioluminesce. There are some mushrooms that glow at night. It's kind of cool. And those, those tend to find their way into fairy movies as well. Um, this one... This one is really cool. This one grows spores inside of it until there are too many spores and the spore pressure builds up inside the thing and then the skin dries out and the spores build up and the skin dries out and gets thin and brittle and then it explodes and it like boom, throws spores everywhere. It's really cool. And there's a picture of that happening. Okay. It's a puff ball, and he just broke, and so this cloud of spores goes out into the air atmosphere. So, and again, awesome design. These may land on dryness, but they're going to be thrown far and wide. And so, how do you get spores to spread around? Well, have it explode. Okay, that's cool. Um, the last group of funguses are the imperfect funguses. And we call them imperfect, not because they are, but because our knowledge is. These are funguses that we don't know what their reproductive structure looks like. We have never discovered their reproductive structure, so we have not yet classified them. It may be true that they don't produce a fruiting body, in which case they would go in the first group, right? They'd go in the zygomasticota, zygomycota. Um, but we haven't ever seen them, and so we call them imperfect fungi, and it sounds like there's something broken about them. But true in truth, we just don't know how they reproduce. They maybe have a very small mushroom we've never seen. They may have a very small uh, ascota that we have never seen, um, but we don't know. So this is the bucket of I don't know. Um, and obviously this bucket is shrinking as people are studying them more and finding out how they do reproduce and then categorize them. And then there are lichens. And this one is awesome. Praise the Lord for lichens. Lichens are symbiotic organisms composed of a fungus and an algae. So funguses, remember, <laughs> funguses are good at breaking down stuff around them and absorbing nutrients. Algae photosynthesize. But algae has to be surrounded by water. Algae don't grow on land. There's no such thing as algae in the desert, right? Or algae outside of the water. But algae are really good at photosynthesizing and producing food. So God created an organism that's actually two organisms. A lichen is not one thing, it's two things. It is a fungus that has anchored into something and is absorbing nutrients. And the algae lives inside the fungus. It's, the algae lives inside the fungus like an apartment building. And the algae does photosynthesis and produces sugar. And the fungus, whose job it is to digest everything around me, 
doesn't digest the fungus, the, the algae. The fungus digests the whatever it's growing on, the tree bark, and brings nutrients that the algae uses along with sunlight to do photosynthesis, and then the algae feeds both the fungus and itself. So it's a symbiotic relationship. And then that's really cool, but how does that spread? How do you get a lichen on this tree to have lichen on this tree? Because we need to have spores of the fungus and we need to have algae. Well, it's amazing. The spores of a lichen travel in pairs where it'll be a group of fungal spores and an algae cell embedded in it and they travel together. And then it'll land on the next tree and the fungus starts to grow and the algae grows through it all. And we have this symbiotic organism. It's two things living together. If you've ever seen um, Men in Black, the original Men in Black movie, right? The guy uh, who is actually, you know, there's actually a robot inside the guy's head and his face opens up and there's the guy sitting in there. Remember that scene? That's what I think of when I think of a, of a lichen. The, the, the dude is like the fungus. But it, it's not just the dude. There's something inside there living with him inside him. Uh, and that's the algae. So this is uh, pictures of, oh, first some, some imperfect funguses. Some of these guys called blights. This is a blight mold. Um, and we don't know how this fungus reproduces. This yellow spot is a fungus on this plant. Uh, and that's an imperfect fungus. It's our knowledge that is imperfect. We don't know everything about that. This is a lichen. So the gray parts is just the fungus that the algae has not yet permeated and gone through. Here you see some cups. These are reproductive structures on the lichen. And when the spores come out of those cups, algae will be traveling with the spores. The green is the algae living in the fungus. Praise the Lord. This is so cool. This is a great picture of you know working together and partnership. And the fungus, which is supposed to destroy everything around it, doesn't destroy the algae. And the algae, which can't live in dry places, now gets to live inside the fungus, which keeps it moist. Um, so it's just really, really cool. Lichens come in all different colors and shapes and sizes. Um, this is one stage of the lichen, and this is another stage of the lichen. So it looks like plants sometimes. Um, this is a lichen as well, and this one is grayer. There's not as much algae in it, but you can still see that it has a green tint to it, which is the algae living through it. Okay, so there you go. Some really, really cool things. The kingdom fungi is really neat. Tomorrow we will have a lab with fun fungi, and you will get to look at some under a microscope, and you will get to dissect some, and we're gonna start growing some. It's awesome. It's really cool. All right. Uh, I will come right here if you're Please get those out.